Thanks for clicking on Wayne.com for the 10th season of Inside the Zone. It's amazing they keep inviting us back. It is. The ratings are through the roof, uh, but it dates back to the Albert Starks days. Uh, Tom Davis has been here, and of course, Justin Kinney for the last few seasons has been our guest. And we'll be talking about football all season long, every Monday here on Inside the Zone. So, big season, 10th season for Inside the Zone. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we got to blow it out. Um, and let's start with the SAC, because it's difficult to know at this point what teams have. Obviously, it's difficult in every conference, but I think the SAC, more so than most, people would have Snyder at the top and then uh, maybe not sure where to go from there. Yeah, I think uh, you, everybody can agree that you put Snyder at the top, and I guess the big question is maybe what's the separation between Snyder and everybody else, and that's a question that we still don't know yet. On paper, it looks significant. Every team seems to have questions except Snyder. When you're nitpicking Snyder and saying, well, those wide receivers aren't overly big, you're really trying to find something uh, that you can really pinpoint as a weakness for Snyder. But right now, the Panthers are far and above on paper as we go into Friday to open the season, the best team in the SAC. Two of the teams that uh, believe that they'll be in the race for the SAC championship would be Lures and Carroll. They're meeting in the Highlight Zone game of the week on Friday. What do you expect in this one? Because Carroll returns a lot of firepower. They got the Becker twins on the outside. Jack Miguel will now not have to split quarterback duties with Ian Miller. So maybe there's a little more continuity there. And Cam Shank, they like your running back. And on the flip side with Lures, they're breaking in essentially a, a new starting quarterback. And uh, 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 Deshaun Bustle has moved to Tennessee. So they've got some question marks there as well, but some returnees and some tr at least one transfer out, I know. That's pretty darn good in Jordan Presley. Yeah, definitely. That one-two punch at running back between Jordan Presley and Tyrion Hambright is just going to be phenomenal for Bishop Lures. Now, the big question as with a lot of the teams in the SAC, is how does that offensive line come together? I think Leo, or excuse me, Lures has some questions still up front. Uh, if they can block for those running backs, they'll be pretty successful. Carroll is another team that lost a lot of their mm -hmm. offensive line as well. So how do they rebuild that offensive front? Because as you mentioned, the Becker boys, Cam Shank, and Jack Miguel, that is an offense that is very, very quick and can put up points in this conference if that offensive line comes together. And I think with Carroll, you also need to see some new leaders step up on the defensive side of the football. They've had so many good players in the past, you know, with the Tranquils and with uh, Schumacher and with Eric Dunton and all of those, uh, Dylan Connor, yeah. in years past. Now it's kind of like a new look. Connor Tapp has graduated. Reed Diller is going to be one of those guys that step up. I think you, I think if you're Doug Donnie, you're really looking forward to seeing how this defense responds this year. And we got a tranquil. We got Jack tranquil. We do. So we are not tranquilless. We're done talking about the defense. It's set now. No, but yeah, there are some questions defensively, but Doug Dynan has been able to really reload that defense, uh, and that's that's a team. And I think looking as we start the season, maybe that's the team with the best shot at Snyder. I think there's maybe three or four different teams that you can look at and say maybe they have a chance against Snyder, and uh, Carroll's one of them. And Lures, which I think if, mm -hmm. as long as they don't suffer a lot of injuries because the depth really isn't there for Bishop mm -hmm. Lures, they could be a team, too, that on the right night can give Snyder a game. Uh, one of the more intriguing games, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one plays out, is Wayne and Bishop Dwenger because, you know, Wayne only won two games last year, but we know the physical talent is there. Coach Moore's got this program going in the right direction. And Dwenger, I still think they're all, we know they're going to be good. They're good every year. Uh, but they've got some question marks and some new guys stepping into big roles. Here's the thing with Wayne. I think we know what they have. We just don't know if it's ready yet to shine on Friday nights consistently. I still think maybe are they a year away? A lot of those talented guys mm -hmm. are juniors. But you, you're right. Friday night is, is put-up time for Wayne because we've heard so much in the offseason about – Watch out for Wayne, and then they have to take a Bishop DeWanger team on that while they have to replace some guys. Uh, we talked about offensive line. That offensive front for, uh, for Bishop DeWanger is very, very strong. Joe Tipman, mm -hmm. a phenomenal junior offensive lineman. So for me on Friday night, a lot of storylines out at Wayne. Is Wayne going to live up to the hype that they've kind of put on themselves, or uh, are they a little bit uh, away still? from really being that team in the SAC. So I think we learn a lot on Friday. A lot of juniors and seniors on that Wayne team with a ton of experience, but uh, got to get those winning ways. Learn how to win is one of those things that yeah, you hear from coaches. It, it, it's so tough to pick a team that has won twice in two years. I mean, are they ready to make that jump? They could very well be, but you're still looking at it going, eh, they could be a year away. We saw that Wayne team several years ago mm -hmm. that you saw each year 
grow and that senior group yeah. with the Powers Boys and Kai Black when they were seniors win a share of the SAC you see a lot of similarities with that group and this group that are juniors right now so we're just really unsure right now whether they're ready Southside at Concordia Concordia obviously coming off a 3A state championship you mentioned with uh, uh, that Wayne team that had a bunch of seniors bunch of seniors Peter Morrison uh, you're talking about Curly Grand. You're talking about Mark Mallers last season. So Concordia has some guys that graduated. And Southside, I, I don't know if we know what they have exactly yet. Yeah, Southside's a little bit interesting. And Coach Roosevelt Norfleet said this year, you know, for once I can say I have an offensive and defensive line that can compete in the SAC. What I don't know is if I have the skill players to block for those guys. Usually it's the opposite. Southside has athletes, but they really don't have the offensive and defensive line. So in seeing some of them last Friday night, I was really impressed. They're physical. They hit. They were uh, taking on Wayne and really uh, stuck some Wayne guys here and there on defense. So Southside, I think, is going to come to play. And then Concordia, how much do they regress without Peter Morrison? I just mm -hmm. do not think you can overvalue Peter Morrison, what he did last year for that, that program. So uh, they have to fill some holes, particularly offensively. Where do they go? They lose Colton Grohovac to transfer a Leo. So Kamari Anderson Drew comes out, mm -hmm. comes back. You know, he had his coming out party in the state championship yeah. game. Younger Curla Grand there at running back. So it'll be interesting to see how they fill those holes uh, from the group that graduated a year ago. Yeah, Jake Bird and Jacob Dorfler have some big shoes to fill at the Definitely. quarterback position, no doubt about it. Uh, Homestead at Northrop. Homestead comes back in uh, uh, on the flip side from Concordia. They've got a Division One quarterback coming back yeah. yes. in Jaya Wright, who's committed to Northern Illinois. Uh, what they don't have is their entire offensive line, who was really good last year. They all graduated. Jordan Presley's now at Lures, so they're running back. They're looking for some skill position guys to step up and also on the offensive line. But I, I think their defense, look, is pretty solid with Cam Shannon in there in the defensive secondary and also Tico Brown there on the defensive line. They may, may need to look at some linebackers. I know that Coach Zolman has been pleased with them so far in camp. But what do you see as being the key with Homestead and Northrop there? My question with Northrop is, can they slow people down defensively? The last couple of years, Northrop's been able to put up a healthy amount of points. They mm -hmm. just can't stop anybody. So now you get uh, Jason Dorfler's dad over there, Dean, from Concordia. He retires, and how he celebrates his retirement is going to take over his son's defense over at Northrop. So is he a difference maker for that Northrop team that just has looked directionless on defense for the last couple of years? That's kind of been the missing piece for Northrop to be mm -hmm. competi consistently competitive against the upper half of the conference is that defense. So do they make strides? They get a tremendous test on Friday against Jaya Wright, a true multifaceted quarterback that can beat you with his arm or, arms or his legs. Yeah, and Keyshawn Edwards, uh, people don't give him a lot of credit, I think, because uh, you know Northrop offense had to throw so much last right. year. When you're down, you throw, and actually they had some pretty good receivers and a pretty darn good quarterback as well. But I think he's a guy to watch out for on Friday nights. Definitely. He's kind of a guy that Coach Dorfler was really hyping up during the offseason, said he put in the work and he's ready to, to really burst onto the scene. Can that offensive line of Northrop give him space to make some plays?